In this Chem 1A lesson, we'll be looking at how Lewis structures can be used to describe the makeup of some simple covalent compounds. Our main learning objective from this video is to build the skills to draw Lewis structures of covalent compounds, including polyatomic ions. Embedded within this understanding will be the ability to identify bonding electrons and lone pair electrons. So Lewis' theory of covalent bonding states that atoms can achieve a full valence octet by sharing their valence electrons with other atoms. So in the image shown here, we see the Lewis structure for two individual chlorine atoms, each with seven valence electrons, and they're shown in different colors to help you to differentiate them. Now, both of these chlorine atoms would love to have one more electron in order to become a stable ion. However, there are no metals nearby that can give up electrons. So instead, these chlorine atoms will share their unpaired electrons to form a covalent bond. And so we can see in this molecule that uh, the bond is formed by sharing one electron from the black chlorine atom and one from this dark red chlorine atom. We can depict bonding electrons by a solid line like the image shown here. Looking at this Lewis structure of the chlorine molecule, we can apply the terms bonding electrons and lone pairs or bonding pairs and lone pairs. So a bonding pair of electrons is depicted as the line. So in a chlorine molecule, we have one bonding pair and six different lone pairs of electrons. It's important to notice that in some cases, there simply aren't enough electrons available to a pair of atoms such that we can have just a single bond between the two atoms and fulfill their octets. Sometimes we need to create multiple bonds. So when two atoms are sharing two pairs of electrons, we call that a double bond. And here's an example of where we commonly see a double bond in the oxygen molecule. Each oxygen atom has six valence electrons, but by sharing two of its valence electrons with its neighbor, it at some point effectively has eight valence electrons. So what we're seeing is kind of like a Venn diagram here in indicating the octet around each of these oxygen atoms. So through sharing of two pairs of electrons, each oxygen gains an octet in some way. Even further, we can have triple bonds, such as shown in a nitrogen molecule. In nitrogen, there are three pairs of electrons being shared directly along the axis of the nitrogen-nitrogen bond, and only one set of lone pairs on each nitrogen. Now, the best way to learn about Lewis structures and how to draw them is simply through practice. So I'm gonna go through a few different examples with you and on the right hand side, you're gonna see the rules that I'm following in order to arrive at the structures. So the first step when drawing a Lewis structure of a covalent molecule is to determine the total number of valence electrons available. You will want to become very familiar with the number of valence electrons so that you can do this more quickly. Nitrogen has five valence electrons in that it has uh, the two S, two configuration with 2p3. So we're getting a total of five electrons from each nitrogen and one electron from each hydrogen. That brings us to a total of eight valence electrons that we can distribute around our molecule. I'm next going to place the least electronegative atom in the center of my paper, with the exception that no matter what the other atoms are, we'll always place hydrogen around the edges since hydrogen can only make one bond. So that means I'm going to put nitrogen in the center. 
and then I'm going to place the other atoms distributed around it. The next step is to add two electrons between each atom to indicate a bonding pair. So two here, two here, two here. Notice that I've now used up six of my va available valence electrons in my bonds. So that means I have minus six bonding electrons. That means I have two electrons left over. So what am I going to do with those? Well, we look at step four, it says add the remaining electrons as needed to fulfill the octet rule, beginning with the most electronegative atoms. Well, hydrogen doesn't have an octet. Hydrogen has a duet. And by having our hydrogen bonded to our nitrogen, each of these hydrogens already has a duet. So I don't need to worry about fulfilling that atom's need for stability. But I do need to ensure that my nitrogen has an octet. And right now it only has six electrons. So I'll add my last two electrons just onto the nitrogen atom as a lone pair. And now when I've added those, I'm down to zero remaining electrons and I have my final structure. And I can simplify my structure by replacing the bonding electrons with lines. And what we end up with is a molecule of NH3, which is known as ammonia. Now let's look at CO2, or carbon dioxide. So on the periodic table, carbon is to the left of oxygen, so that means that carbon is the least electronegative. So I'll put my carbon in the center, and I'll put an oxygen to either side of it. I'll begin by creating a single bond by sharing two electrons. And I need to do my accounting to know how many electrons I even had to play with. So again, carbon has four valence electrons. Each of my oxygens have six valence electrons. So six plus six is 12, plus four is I have 16 valence electrons to work with. So right now I've only used up four of those to create my single bond. I'm now going to add remaining electrons as needed to fulfill the octet rule, starting with the most electronegative atoms. So I've used up four so far. That means I've got 12 to work with. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now I've used them all. No electrons left. And I put them on the oxygens because the oxygens are more electronegative once again. So looking at our structure, we have used up all of the electrons in our Lewis structure, but we have a problem in that our carbon atom does not have a full octet. So that means we need to look at rule number five, and we need to form double and triple bonds such that all of the atoms have a full valence shell. Now we can't just throw electrons on carbon just because we want to, they have to come from somewhere. So the place they're gonna come from is from the oxygens, which are already bonded to the carbon. So what will happen is one of these oxygens will take a lone pair and place it between the oxygen and carbon to create a new bond. And the same thing will happen on the other side. So we end up with two pairs of electrons being shared between each carbon and oxygen atom. And then our oxygens have only two lone pairs instead of three. Note that in the structure I've drawn, drawn now, each of the atoms can create an octet and the molecule should be stable. So replacing our bonding electrons with lines, we end up with what we usually see as a carbon dioxide molecule. This linear structure with balanced with the double bond to oxygen on either side and two lone pairs on each of the oxygen atoms. Now our learning objective in this video also included being able to draw Lewis structures for polyatomic ions. And they're really nothing different than what we've already gone over. The only thing that we need to pay attention to is that with polyatomic ions, some of the electrons will be coming from the charge of that ion. So we need to account for those. 
So to look at both a positively charged polyatomic ion and a negatively charged polyatomic ion in this example. So we're going to start with the ion ammonium. So very similar to the molecule ammonia that we just went over. So again, we're seeing nitrogen with five electrons. And then now we have four hydrogens, so four times one electron. So altogether, normally, those elements would bring with them nine electrons. However, ammonium has a positive charge. So that means there's one fewer electrons in this molecule than there are protons. So when I'm counting the number of electrons, I actually have to subtract one because of that positive charge. So we're left with a total of eight valence electrons once again. I don't know why my pen does that. There we go. Okay. So we'll start out with our same scaffold. We'll put our nitrogen in the center and we'll put now four hydrogens all around it. Putting two electrons between each hydrogen and the nitrogen. And you'll see that by doing so, I have used up all of my electrons in these bonds. So now I'm at zero extra electrons so I have no lone pair going on my nitrogen. When we were learning about writing the Lewis structure for anions, such as, we learned that we use square brackets to indicate that the charge applied to that anion applied to the entire symbol with all of its Lewis dots. So the correct way to represent a polyatomic ion is also using square brackets to hold the whole molecule and then place that charge on the outside. So a complete Lewis structure of ammonium, we would place the nitrogen in the center and replace our bonding electrons with lines to indicate a bond. And then place the entire molecule within square brackets and as a superscript include that positive charge. And now we have the Lewis structure for ammonium. Now let's look at the Lewis structure of nitrite. With nitrite, we have the five valence electrons from nitrogen. We have two oxygen atoms, each bringing with it six valence electrons. And then we have an added electron giving us the negative one charge on nitrite. So that means we're adding an electron. We're going to add one here. So we have two times six is 12 plus one is 13, plus five is 18 valence electrons to work with. Nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen, so we'll place that in the center and put a bond between it and each of the oxygens. I've now used up only four of my electrons. I have 14 left. I'll begin by adding these to the more electronegative atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Still have two left. I'll give them to the center atom, nitrogen. So looking at what I've drawn so far, you'll notice I have used up all of my electrons. They're all gone now. But there is, again, a problem in that my central atom does not have an octet. It only has six electrons around my nitrogen atom. So that means that one of the oxygens is going to have to kick in a lone pair to make a double bond. So we end up with nitrogen with a double bond to one of the oxygens and a single bond to the other. One of the oxygens having the three lone pairs, the other only having two. Remembering also the lone pair on our nitrogen. And now to clean this up by replacing my bonding electrons with lines, I have my single bonded oxygen, then my nitrogen with its single lone pair, and then my double bonded oxygen with two lone pairs. Again, I'm going to put the whole thing into a nice square brackets and indicate that there is a negative charge on this molecule. Here are some more complex Lewis structures that you can practice with. Pause the video here and try to work through these two molecules 
and then resume the video once you think you have their structures to check your answers. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again to look at resonance and the formal charge on the atoms within Lewis structures.